was probably 19 or 20 years old and I was talking to Robert Greene, one of the greatest authors of all time, 40 Laws of Power. And I was thinking about becoming a writer and I had some time left on my contract at the company I was working and he said, look, what is this next year gonna be for you? He said, is this gonna be a live time or dead time? And what he meant by that was, was I gonna, just gonna burn out this year of the contract or they're just gonna sit there? Or was I gonna spend every minute of that year becoming better, reading better, reaching out to people, building relationships, trying new things, experimenting? And, and he was totally right. That year, after I told myself in my head that I was gonna quit, but before I put in my notice, was one of the most productive years of my life. I've had so much done. I have relationships to this day that came out of that experience. And most of all, what I took was that, that sort of difference between a live time and dead time and how essential it is. Look, when you're stuck in traffic, is that gonna be a live time or dead time for you? You're stuck at the airport. Are you gonna sit there and order a pizza or are you gonna walk around the terminal listening to a podcast? Are you gonna make a phone call that you've been putting off? Are you gonna sit down and write that article or that book that you've told yourself you're gonna write? What are you gonna do with time when you are not as much in control? That is the critical question. There was this man, his name was Malcolm Little. He was not a great person. He was a criminal. He ran a prostitution ring, a burglary ring. So when he gets arrested and he's sentenced to 10 years in prison, those 10 years could have been what they are for most prisoners, which is 10 years of dead time. He could have watched the clock on the wall tick away the seconds of his life. And he spent maybe the first year of his sentence doing precisely that. But then one day he goes to the prison library and he checks out a dictionary. And then he goes to the prison commissary and he buys a pencil and a notepad. And he begins to copy word by word the words in the dictionary until he's completed the whole thing. Basically, he teaches himself to read in prison. And then he goes on to books about philosophy and history and religion and everything he can get his hands on. And in this process, this man, Malcolm Little, is in effect transformed into Malcolm X, the civil rights leader. Why does Malcolm X wear glasses? Because he wears out his eyes reading in prison. An interviewer would ask Malcolm X, where's your alma mater, where'd you go to college? And he just had a one word answer, he said books. But really you could say that, that he went to college in a live time, he had a live time. Those years in prison were what transformed him from being a criminal to a civil rights leader because he decided he would use that time productively. He would be made better for it. And I think that's an inspiring call to action for all of us. What are we going to do in the times where we've been deprived of some choice, but we have another choice and in that choice we can choose a lifetime.